she thought that we were well positioned. I, I felt good about that. I felt good about what this board has done um, in, in its approvals for the kinds of things that uh, we're trying to do to keep that balanced approach to try to address um, safety issues, uh, facility issues, uh, staffing issues with regard to mental health and counseling, uh, and, and staffing issues in ways that help um, manage the, the functioning of our schools, whether it's AIDS or people manning the door or parking a lot of tenants. Um, I, I feel like we, we have done a good job of um, trying to address all the needs. And I, I, what I hear people saying is, we want you to continue to do that. We want that we want to cons we want more of everything. We we'd like to see more counselors and more security and you know more improvements. And I, I I don't think that there's anybody here that disagrees. We'd like to be able to do more of everything and and try to make things uh, better. We just have to balance the resources that we have to to make that happen. Um, and obviously there are limits. Um, sure, jump in. Um. Yeah, I, I want to echo um, what Mr. Markarian just said about the police department in our town. Um, honestly, I can say I've had kids in this district for a lot of years now, and I have only heard 100% or 110% positive things about our school resource officers and our police department in regards to how they interact with our students and with our staff and in our town. Um, it, you know, these are emotional times with people, you know, upset by, you know, things that have, have happened, and I think, um, you know, any, you know, debate going on about staffing, you know, whether it be um, more counselors or more officers is all, you know, coming from the same place. People are upset and they're worried, and I think, um, you know, as board members, we, we do have limited um, budgets. I just want to speak to the one comment about our, you know, per pupil, pupil cost going up and our enrollment going down. Um, Mr. Markarian just mentioned a lot of the things we've added over the last several years, and they cost a lot of money, and a lot of them involve staffing. So yes, our, our per pupil cost has gone up, but it's for our most vulnerable students. So um, it's not that we just have all those extra money you know, laying around that we have to spend. Um, we did budget for a number of security upgrades, and um, Mr. McLaughlin has gotten a number of security um, grants um, for our, some of our construction in the entrances of schools, and he's got some other ones this year. Um, so, you know, it's been a priority for a number of years, not just this year when, when a number of unfortunate things happened. Um, so, you know, we do have some unknowns with our budget. For those of you who sat through um, the budget presentations, you know, we still don't know for sure what's going on um, definitively with state aid. We don't know for sure, as those of you who sat through the demographers report, you know, for sure, and the recent township committee meetings, what's going to happen with affordable housing and our school population. So we can't, you know, get ahead of ourselves and start adding all kinds of staff, you know, just assuming that our population is going to drop quickly. You know, we don't know that, and we also don't know for sure what is, you know, will happen with our state aid. So we have to be, you know, somewhat cautious. Um, you know, we can't add recurring costs to our budget with money we don't know we're going to have next year. You know, so even if we got a little bit of state aid this year, we don't know for sure that we'll have it next year. We have to be careful, you know, what types of things we, we use that for. So, you know, we're, we're trying to um, get as much input as we can from everyone, and we've been listening. We've gotten lots of emails. We've been listening to everything that the community is saying. We've had a lot of conversations in, you know, various committees, in finance, in personnel, in our social emotional um, learning committee about priorities. I think everybody, as most of the speakers said tonight, is focused on, you know, social emotional health of our students and doing everything we can um, in that regard, and so that's a priority. I think everyone, you know, is concerned about school climate, and we, you know, have, you know, a lot of um, data to work with with these surveys, and um, we're going to be doing the student stressor survey, which it will be very interesting to see the results of that compared to a number of years ago. I think I've been feeling like I'm getting really old lately because I feel like I'm getting into, like, we've been not having all these conversations, and we're like, oh my God, the world is a mess, you know, society's a mess, what's going on? But it is scary, and I think everyone's kind of feeling it. Um, you know, we don't know how much social media and other things are contributing to the sense of unease and, and distress going on. And, you know, we're all worried about our kids. I have two younger kids, and I got to tell you, having a sixth grader and a second grader now is way different than it was when my older kids were that age. And it's freaking me out. Like, I thought I should have this down by now, but it's like we're like having all these conversations like, oh my God, what do we do with this? What do we, you know, what rules do we have? What, what do we do? What if his friends are all playing this thing? What do we, you know, um, it's a completely different ball game. And so one of the things I just wanted to put out there to the public, you know, that, that concerns me is, you know, we've put a lot of effort in the last year or two into, um, 
you know, programming for parents. You know, we've had a lot of good speakers come. We have one um, for William Annan about, um, that got rescheduled because of our horrible, one of our horrible snow days um, and stuff. So we have all these, um, these speakers and, you know, the turnout's not as high as you would hope considering how everyone in town, when you read on Facebook and stuff, seems so concerned about these issues and the struggles that the students are having. You know, we're trying to do the community um, outreach and communication and engage the community because it is a community problem. We can't fix everything thing in the schools like we you know we don't have the students 24 7 we don't have the ability to to solve all these problems and so we want to engage the community so that's just something if you're talking to your friends I know a lot of you that are here do come to these programs and I see you there um, but if you're talking especially to parents with younger kids you know to try to encourage them to come out to some of these things in here because we've had some really good experts speak to a lot of these topics and um, I think that parents have to be talking to each other you know and trying to go together tomorrow. yeah the ones tomorrow I wasn't sure I didn't want to speak out of turn. Um, smartphones, smart choices, um, and it's at WAMS at seven o'clock, and that's the one, it's, is it an F, a former FBI? Um, coming to talk about, you know, and, and I, it doesn't just apply to middle schoolers, I mean, obviously high school parents, but fourth and fifth grade parents, like, they should come hear this, you know, because the kids are starting younger and younger. My, my sixth grader has friends of, some of them had iPhones since they're in first grade. Um, so I think that the elementary parents should be starting to pay attention to these things much earlier than they used to. So anyway, that was just my two thoughts. Um, I think we, we covered a lot of the questions. There was a lot, if anyone asked a question and we didn't give you a specific answer or you had a question about specific vulnerabilities at a school or anything, please email um, the Board of Ed and we'll have someone try to get you the answer um, that you wanted or pass the information along to whoever's appropriate if it's something that you think should be pointed out um, to us. Does anyone else on the board have anything that they wanted to say? I covered everything? Okay. Um, so on the agenda now, um, we are up to the superintendent's report. <laughs> um, so there's two items on there. Would someone like to make a motion for those two? Mrs. Waldridge, does someone like to second? Mrs. White? Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about those two items before we vote? No. Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne. I'm looking for what the numbers are. Oh. It's the HIV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mrs. Swarner. Yes. Mrs. Gray. Yes. Mr. Salmon. Yes. Mrs. White. Yes. Mrs. Richmond. Okay. Yes. Mrs. Corn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to get my agenda. Okay, so we, now we're up to the approval of minutes. Let's, oh, we have to do public comment on agenda items. I'm sorry. Um, it just feels like we just had public comment. So at this point, anyone who wants to come up and talk about anything else on the agenda um, can come up and please. Um, what? Besides security, <laughs> come up and. Um, James Wolpel Evergreen Place. I didn't know where my comments fit into all of this, whether it was part of the security or agenda or not. So I'm just going to fit them in here because I think it has to do with all of it. Um, I'd just like to, to get real for a second about the problem at hand. We've seen that having police in a school is no guarantee that a shooting can be prevented or that it spares lives with certainty. And yes, that is the horrible truth. But we also need to look at it in this way. What we do know is that we have, uh, what we do know is concrete. We have concrete facts that a mass shooting in New Jersey has never once occurred. Not once. Only three school shootings have occurred in New Jersey since the year 1764, and that's 254 years and only three shootings with one death. What else do we know that is also concrete? Students in today's world deal with family life, social media, overscheduling and academic pressure, drugs and alcohol, bullying, and the pressures of adolescence. We've lost 84 school-aged children in New Jersey in just three years because they took their own lives. Just let that sink in for a moment. It's a horrific number for the state of New Jersey. 
84 children gone. I hope you haven't forgotten the pain testimony delivered by Martha's best friend, Alan Mellick, and her cousin, Joe, and what it now means for them to go on without her because Martha committed suicide. I haven't forgotten, and I don't know how anyone who was here or heard their presentations could. You can make a school a prison, you can add as many extra layers of protection and reinforcement as you have money to spend, but vulnerabilities will always remain. Unless you address mental wellness through curriculum, starting in the elementary schools and provide more counselors to deliver it, and a way for parents to access it, we might as well all stand up right now and turn our backs to the crisis that is already in our community. I will not turn my back on this. I will not turn my back on Martha or on Kira. And I'm asking for you to please do the same. I'm asking that you demonstrate that by funding mental wellness curriculum and counselors to teach it, and a very specific recommendation I received from a good friend of mine. It is a program by Frank Pacone for teachers and school personnel that talks to teachers at surface level and shows us how to identify those kids that need help <coughs> but don't ask or tell anyone they need it. It can be done during an in-service day. Please bring Frank Pacone to Bernard's Township. And just to let you know, I've already reached out to the people in my own district to have him uh, come to our Professional Development Day in October. Do these things for your teachers. Do these things for our students. And do them so no other classmate will endure the painful memories of a beloved friend lost to suicide. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment on agenda items? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Parisa Hakimzada, Atlas Road. Um, I should have probably talked earlier, but um, you know, I feel very strongly that police officers are very important in our society and they're very helpful to our society and I have no problems with police officers. It's just <coughs> where they belong in our society and in our schools and if they belong in our schools. So, you know, a few people spoke to the whole community helpers and that we teach our kids that police officers are good people. I teach my kids that police officers are good people, but it doesn't mean that I think that they belong in our schools. Um, I don't think there's any, st I, you know, I'm kind of fact-based, like I don't think there's any studies <coughs> that show us that police officers in schools actually decrease the risk of active shooters coming to the school. And perhaps the reason that there's less, uh, there's more shootings at schools where there aren't police officers is because there are more schools that don't have police officers. So you can't like take a statistic out of the air and out of context and just use it to support one argument versus another argument. There's probably less schools, and I don't know this for a fact, but in, in the United States there's probably less schools that have officers. Um, I think personally, that a person who comes into a school to shoot people doesn't actually think that they're gonna leave alive. So they don't really care. They don't really come in thinking, oh my God, I better not go into this school because they might shoot me versus another school. These are people that are somewhat deranged. They're gonna go into the school and either they shoot themselves or somebody else shoots them and kills them. So I don't think they go into these schools thinking, I better stay away from this school because they have like an armed security officer. What kind of arms would these people have? Are they going to have, are, are the officers that we would be planning to hire have semi-automatic rifles? Are they going to have handguns? Are they going to have shotguns? 
So what kind of arms are they going to have? What happens if they have handguns and the person that comes in has a semi-automatic rifle? I may go in the corner and hide myself. Like, I mean, what would they be able to do in that setting? And if, and if the person that comes into the school and is shooting gets their weapon, then that becomes an even more dangerous situation. I mean, I was talking to my daughter who, because of school issues, couldn't come, and she wrote this whole speech. But, you know, if you're on one side of Ridge, and the, sh the security person, and the armed shooter is on the other side of bridge, by the time they get over, there's gonna be tons of casualties. So I think, you know, are we gonna, I think we have to think of this societally too. So I know we're a school board, but are we going to have armed guards at the baseball field, and at the movie theater, at the mall, at the restaurant? I mean, are we just gonna live in a society where just, we just have to have armed guards everywhere? It's not the only place that shootings happen, and we don't know that they're going to help. So I think the finite amount of money that we have, because the, the funds are not endless, need to be used in the most productive, impactful way where we have evidence to show that it makes a difference. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Bill DiLorenzo uh, from Linden Drive. And uh, I want to thank the Board of Education for uh, providing all that information tonight and producing the uh, safety and security audit. Um, now that all the information from the audit is in and the recommendations have been made uh, and you've gotten quite a bit of public feedback, I just have a basic question. Um, you know, what, what is the decision process going forward? What are, what are your next steps in order to determine what uh, you're going to do based on what you heard tonight? Uh, what other parts of the township uh, governments are you going to be working with? And uh, what sort of timeline do you expect to uh, resolve some of these issues? Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment on agenda items? Um, so I'll, I'll just respond. Um, I think mostly um, it was just some more feedback about um, school security, but in terms of the last um, questions about the decision process and the timeline, um, some of the board has already made a number of decisions related to school security in terms of what we've budgeted for going forward and the ongoing work we've already been doing. So that work will continue in, in committees, you know what I mean, in the finance committee, you know, talking about the facilities and the um, things that we're doing to harden the schools. We're obviously going to take into account all of the recommendations um, from, you know, um, from DevTAC in terms of at the specific buildings and how we can, um, you know, make tweaks to what we are already kind of working on. Um, most of it's stuff we've already been working on, but it's just uh, like suggestions for how to do it a little bit better, or suggestions for sh like s small things that we could we could we had to revise our policies. So the policy committee will look at the policies to see what um, what additions or revisions are necessary. So I think the, it, most of that work will happen in committees, and we'll report out at the public meetings. You know, each month when the committees report out about what we've been doing. So when we do the policies, we'll, the policy committee will report out when we are making any decisions that goes through the finance committee about purchasing things or cameras or whatever we'll be reporting out. Um, I think, you know, we have some discussions to have in terms of the personnel committee because we have, you know, um, you know people, you know, can, we have limited um, money. We have some, also some staffing needs for aides and teachers that we have to look at this spring. So we will be looking at, in terms of any um, positions, um, what we can do. Um, we do have some, we, we've had, had some conversations about um, creating um, some kind of school security position, you know, that would be like overseeing stuff for the district. We, we, there's a f number of options for what we could do with that that we've been discussing. Um, so, you know, we'll be reporting out as the committees discuss these things at the future meetings, you know, um, in the next several months as we go through that process. Is that, did I miss anything about that? No? Okay. Um, okay, we're up to approval of minutes now. Um, there's a, um, one item. Would someone like to make a motion? This is Corn. Anyone else? Um, this is Richmond. Any comments or questions about the minutes? 
Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Swarner? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Corn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Um, okay, so we're up to um, annual appointments. There's eight items. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Woldridge and Mrs. Swarner. Um, these are annual appointments that we do each year, giving people, um, different um, staff members, um, the ability to sign things um, and do different work in the district. Um, we have um, a lot of field trips <laughs> destinations. Sometimes we add more as the year goes on, but these are ones that are um, anticipated or um, recurring on there. Does anyone have any questions about any of these items before we vote? No? Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Swarner? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Corn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Um, we're up to the Finance Committee. Uh, we have 55 items <laughs> under finance, which is a lot. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Waldridge, does someone like to second? Mrs. White? Um, I guess I will do um, the Finance Committee report and then we can vote on those items and I'll go through the items um, as quickly as I can because there's so many of them. Um, the Finance Committee met on Wednesday, May 16th and um, the first thing that we um, spent an, a fair amount of time on was we had um, two of our um, people from Arthur Gallagher, which is our healthcare broker, come and explain um, our contracts for the next school year. Um, they explained two different types of contracts and how these contracts are slightly different than they were in the past because we're now self-funding our health insurance. So the first contract that we talked about is our contract for stop-loss insurance. This is um, the insurance that the district has in case an individual or Entire group of people that are insured goes way over what is anticipated. So we always had stop loss insurance with our old type of contract, but now it's just worded a little bit different because we're deciding on um, what type we want to have, you know what I mean, for our district. Um, and it, it, it can, it's just a slightly different. It doesn't affect any of the individual employees in any way um, differently. So um, they um, recommended a plan that has. Um, $250,000 of um, individual stop loss. That, so like if an individual's claims go above that amount, the stop loss insurer would pay as opposed to the district. And then the other part was the group amount. So they recommended we choose 115% option, which means that if our claims for the year go up to 100, over 115% of what was um, expected, then the stop loss insurance kicks in. So they explained about how the, this works and what's covered under it. Um, so the employees, everything's covered for them that was covered under our old plan is basically what it comes down to. Um, Mr. McLaughlin verified that retirees who are choosing to pay for our plan will still be covered um, in terms of the individual stop loss. Um, we only have a, a small number of retirees that pay into our plan, and so this will not change our stop loss insurance costs. Um, then they talked about the contract for actual health care. Um, we're using Horizon for both of these contracts. Um, Horizon is what we already have for our health care, and Horizon turned out to be the best deal for the stop loss also among the different um, options. So we're going to end up with Horizon for both. Um, the Horizon plan, in terms of the um, health care plan, is um, there's no difference for how the claims get um, paid in terms of from the employees, um, and we are paying Horizon to administer the claims. So they will, and we pay a monthly amount, which is less than the amount that was built into our old plan, because now um, it's not part of the actual, um, what's the word I want? Well, it's not part Premiums. of the perspective plan, right. so it's not yeah. marked up by Horizon. We're paying about 50% per person. Okay, so we're paying about half for that, which saves the district money. For the money, administrative. Saves, yeah, so, and, and the employees on their health care premiums. So um, anyway, they went through the, how that works and what's covered and um, assured us that everything is, um, is covered that needs to be covered. Um, and the plan that they negotiated has no additional costs for Horizon to administer prescriptions. So that will all be part of the fee. Um, so those contracts will come back to the board, to the Finance Committee, um, fairly soon to be voted on in June. Um, 
the next thing we um, talked about is um, Mr. Harding, our facilities director, gave a um, short presentation on recycling in the district. We've had some students and a, f a couple of parents ask us about how recycling happens and is it really being, you know, is everything being recycled, you know, all the time in every place. Um, some students have questioned whether, you know, kids are putting their stuff in the right recycling bin or whether the recycling is getting put in the right dumpster. So he came, he showed us slides, he watched the different trucks come and how often they come. So we had a whole, you know, little PowerPoint which was attached to the minutes, but basically he explained that, yes, all of the, you know, procedures are there. We have the recycling and trash containers and we have the, the dumpsters and we have the trucks coming when they're supposed to come and picking the stuff up. So if there are issues with recycling, it's really a issue of education and um, you know, getting people to do it. So um, we suggested that he um, talk to Aramark in terms of um, you know, talking to their staff about uh, you know, recycling and what they're doing and also looking into some increased signage in different places to encourage the students and staff members to use the recycling or, and you know, to educate the younger students about recycling who may not know that much about it. Um, so that we'll get a follow up on that. Um, we had a, um, a short update on the Ridge student activities. Um, as you'll remember from last time I reported out on this, Mr. Makarian said that the effort is underway to identify and separate those accounts that are fee-based from those who involve, which ones involve student fundraising. So he met with Mr. Krause, Mr. Shello, and other staff members at Ridge. So at this point, they've identified several fee-based accounts that really should be like pass-throughs each year, like AP tests and PSATs. Um, book accounts when the kid loses their book and they have to pay a fine um, to the school so they can buy a new book. Um, senior fees for cap and gown, you know, the student pays for them, they get their cap and gown, that's not money that would be carried over to the next year. So they're working going through each account to identify exactly, you know, how they're being used and how they can be managed going down the road. So it'll be a kind of slow process, but um, they're kind of going at the easy ones first um, that are, you know, more straightforward um, in and out types of accounts. And we'll keep the Finance Committee and um, the board updated as that process goes along. Um, and then we reviewed all the 55 items for tonight's agenda. Um, a lot of them are annual approvals. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'm trying to point out any ones that are um, unusual. Um, a lot of them are basically us reappointing all different people that do work for our district. Um, Mr. McLaughlin explained that none of the rates for any of these contracts or vendors or whoever's have increased by more than 2% and a number of them he was able to negotiate rates under that. Um, there are some donations. I'm trying to find what numbers they are. Number six. And number seven. Oh yeah, okay, number seven. I'm gonna turn to my agenda <laughs> so I can talk about them. Okay, so number six is a donation from the Liberty Corner School PTO for um, installing water bottles. They're, this, they're changing the amount, they're increasing the amount that they've donated. We had already approved a um, $20,000 donation, so now I've in increased it. So that's very generous and we thank the PTO for that. Um, there's a donation from the Ridge High School Band Association um, for trailer wrappers, and if anyone wants to know what a trailer wrapper is, it goes on the outside of the truck to, say, to like make it look nice and say, you know, Ridge Marching Band or whatever. I didn't know what a trailer wrapper was either. Um, but th that's another nice donation. And then we have a donation from the William Inn and PTO for a whole bunch of wish list items. So we thank the PTO there for, um, for fundraising for all of those things. Um, let's see, back to my list. So there's another whole bunch of things that are um, annual things. We approved our subscription bus rate for next year, which is a $10 increase from this year. We're still not up to what it actually costs um, to run the buses, we've been, you know, inching it up a little bit. Unfortunately, the busing's expensive, um, and so we feel the pain for those of us who have to pay for busing. Um, and um, an item 18 is an application for a safety grant, which I think I had referenced before when I was talking about security. There are several projects that this money will go towards. Um, some of them are for the access stuff at Ridge four doors and um, access to the building, um, and some 3M film for some glass at some of the buildings. Um, Let's see. A couple of them are DOE approval for um, small construction projects because you have to get DOE approval anytime you're like taking a wall out or doing anything to a classroom or other things. Um, so we need to get that approval. Um, there's another whole bunch of approvals of um, different people we do work with in the district. Um, our monitoring of facilities and food services, which for people that um, don't remember or who are new, advocate 
is a company that helps you know monitor our services and save us money. And we've gone in the past through um, presentations showing us how much they save us each year. Um, but if any board members want more information about that, um, let us know. Maybe finance could do a little report on that sometime because I know we have new people. Um, that might not know what that is. We re re um, approved our contract with Effective School Solutions, which provides counseling to students at Ridge that we had just started this last year, um, which I think Mr. Markarian had referenced when he was talking about different things we've done for um, SEL of students. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of others. Um, yeah, they're mostly reappointments of stuff. And then the last whole bunch of them are for home instruction and special education services. Does anyone have any questions about all of those items? because I kind of skimmed through. <laughs> yes. I only have a question. Uh, sure. I'm just going to ask you something about the, your minutes. OK. And the, the recycling thing. And I was, OK, go ahead. Me of, um, was project, the, the Project Citizen kids, were they involved in that? Like, is this something that they could, you know? I think it would be a great project for students to do, um, so to work they, on. They, they, they came and asked about it, and they were looking into it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. There's been several yeah. project citizen groups that looked at this. There was a group the year, this year that was one this year. On yeah. Sustainability. Yeah. And I, yeah. Just, I didn't know. If yeah. Something that would be right up the alley, or. Yeah, and I know it's, there's stuff in different buildings where they have like the green team or whatever, and kids go around and get the recycling. Like different buildings have different programs. It's not that the students aren't doing anything. It's just if there's any inconsistent recycling going on, you know, it may be because, you know, younger students or students haven't been involved in that and aren't thinking about it, you know, when they're throwing their stuff in the wrong container. Yeah, but it's definitely something that students would be able to work on. Any other questions about the minutes? Okay, so I guess we have to have a roll call on all those items. Mr. Byrne. Yes. Mrs. Swarner. Yes. Mrs. Gray. Yes. Mr. Salmon. Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. <coughs> Madam President? Thank you. Okay, we're up to the personnel committee. We have 19 items. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Swarner? Would someone like to second it? Mrs. Gray? Um, did you want to say anything? Um, personnel met this past Friday. Um, I was not at the meeting. Mrs. Gray was kind enough to take the minutes and we will report out at our next meeting. Um, I believe this is all kind of standard end of year personnel stuff. Are there any questions before we vote? Did you want to say something before we vote? Or after we vote? Okay, so we'll take a vote. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Swarner? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. I think Mr. Markarian or Mr. Syed or both wanted to make a comment about one of the items. Thank you, Ms. McEwen. Yeah, so with that, we have just appointed our new Director of School Counseling, uh, and her name is Stephanie Smith, and she comes to us from Alexandria, Virginia, where she was the Director of Guidance at both the uh, middle school for a period of time, and then most recently the high school, a uh, very large high school, T.C. Williams High School, which is a high school serving over 3,800 students, so uh, certainly familiar with a larger school system, and uh, has roots in New Jersey originally, and uh, I mentioned that uh, she has her BA, her BS, excuse me, from James Madison and a master's in counseling. Very from excited. Wake University. She'll be so starting are. actually June 25th. Uh, that was motion seven uh, for that week of overlap. And then officially she starts with us July 1st. So very excited to welcome Stephanie Smith. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board. Thank you so much for my appointment. I am very excited to get to work and to start to be here in a few weeks. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Markarian and Mr. Syatt for all of your support thus far. Thank you. And I guess you got a little preview of our district this evening. <laughs> yeah. So you started your, you started your training already. <laughs> um, OK, so we um, already voted on personnel. Um, let me get to the right page. This is a very long agenda. Okay. Um, we are now up to curriculum. Um, we have one. Oh, wait, where? Did I miss policy? Oh, I'm sorry. I turned too many pages. Okay, we're up to policy. And there's two items on policy. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Korn and Mr. Salmon.
So do you want to say anything before we well, vote? The, or? The, um, the second meeting is, we, we already talked about that at the other meetings, but it's just basically acceptable use of computer networks and computers and, also, and, computers and resources. And it's just, we just um, put some new language in about how the kids could use their um, devices in the schools. The biggest change was that bridge, it wasn't even that big a change. Does anyone have any questions or comments about these items? Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yeah, sure. When I read it. Yes. Mrs. Swerner? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Corn? Yes. Mrs. Baldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President. Thank you. Okay, now we're up to curriculum. We have one item. Would someone like to make a motion for that item? Mrs. Woldridge and Mrs. Gray, second. Um, do you have a report? I do. Okay. So, um, the curriculum committee, okay. The curriculum committee met on May 11th. And um, see, the first item is the uh, textbook that we'll be hopefully yes. approving when we vote and it's called Comprehensive Health Skills for Middle School. And um, it's copyright is 2019, and 80 copies are needed for classroom copies. And the total cost, including additional materials and shipping, is $6,249.32. So this is a new textbook for all health classes in grades six through eight, and it will replace an existing 2009 textbook. The new textbook covers several topics that are in the health curriculum but are not covered in the old textbook, including mental disorders such as anxiety and OCD, suicide prevention, stress management, healthy sleep habits, bullying and cyberbullying, vaping, which is covered in the tobacco chapter, contraceptives, teen pregnancy, pregnancy prevention, and sexual orientation. The textbook also includes online tools such as quizzes. These new textbooks will be classroom copies. Um, William Ann and Health classes generally have about 35 students. In sixth and seventh grade, health is a six week cycle and in eighth grade, health is one marking period. The next topic we talked about, um, we had some questions and comments on the grades nine through 12 English language arts program evaluation. So the first question was, what is strategy instruction, which was uh, mentioned in the program evaluation. So in reading, this provides students with tools to increase their reading comprehension. For example, notice what is repeated in the text, it is likely to be important. In writing, the goal is to engage students in the revision process. Teachers use the acronym RADR, which means reorder, add, delete, replace. How would a language arts lab period work? Language arts teachers would have, could have a lab duty instead of another duty, such as hall duty. Um, a comment that more teacher feedback on grammar and more exposure to new vocabulary would be useful. Mr. Huncher um, looked at grammar and vocabulary instruction as part of the program evaluation. The proposed workshop or lab model may provide students with more feedback. A suggestion is to reinstate the word of the day. And then finally, um, the last topic was English language arts electives. Several English language arts electives at Ridge were eliminated several years ago when budget cuts were made. Ridge currently offers creative writing, communication, and speech and debate. Ms. Shadis said that speech and debate will not be offered during the 2018-19 school year due to low enrollment. Adding more semester electives is one of the recommendations in the program evaluation. Curriculum evaluation, cur excuse me, curriculum writing and additional staff may be needed if electives are added and then other electives um, may possibly have to be dropped. Mr. Hunter next provided an update on the summer reading for 2018. Students voted on the final four choice titles for summer reading and they are Lone Survivor by Marcus 
Luttrell, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, Scythe by Neil Schusterman, and Unbroken by Lauren Hillebrand. And um, of these four titles, there are three nonfiction and one fiction, which is Scythe. Um, next, Dr. Heinemann provided an update on honors chemistry. There were three letters that were sent out in April to honors chemistry students and their parents. Um, the first letter, which was sent to current students in honors chemistry, said that um, tests given, tests and quizzes uh, given in the third and fourth marking period were being curved. Um, the second letter, also sent to current students, said that this year classroom instruction was modified to be more closely aligned with the SAT chemistry subject test. And many of the topics on the test are taught at the end of the second marking period and during the third and fourth marking periods. These topics require a great deal of mathematics and have been difficult for students to master. It was also noted that students may be having difficulty for reasons other than mathematics. As a result, the teachers will not be including these topics when calculating the student's fourth marking period grades. And then the third letter was sent to students who are enrolled in honors chemistry next year, 2018-19, and their parents. The purpose of the letter was to set expectations regarding the difficulty of the course and to describe some changes that are planned. A summer assignment will be reinstated and it will focus on topics that require math skills. In addition, the course curriculum will be revised this summer so that more topics that require mathematics are taught earlier in the school year. Ms. Shade has said that since the letter went out, as of the date of the meeting, five students had talked with their counselors about whether to stay in honors chemistry next year. Um, we also talked about whether um, one or more teacher recommendations should be added. For, for honors chem, that would most likely be a, the biology teacher and math teacher from the previous year. Those recommendations would not be a gateway to taking the class, but instead would be additional information for students and parents to help them make the decision to take honors chemistry. Um, a suggestion was made that if a student um, struggled or required a lot of extra help to achieve a course grade in general, as well as honors chemistry, a note be provided to their guidance counselor. And then I just wanted to mention that there was um, a last minute edit that didn't get into the minutes, but the 2018-19 Ridge Program of Studies has already um, been revised to advise students who plan to take the SAT subject test in chemistry that they should plan to take AP um, chemistry in 11th grade. The next topic we talked about was Project Lead the Way Engineering. The board recently heard feedback from several students about the Introduction to Engineering Design course, which is the first course in the Project Lead the Way Engineering program. The students said that the Introduction to Engineering Design course does not include enough hands-on projects and is too focused on mathematics. The feedback is not about problems with grades. The students are doing very well in the course. This is the second year the course is being taught at Ridge, and Mr. Fackelman said last year students had similar feedback. Mr. Fackelman also said that the course content is discussed with parents at academic planning night and that um, Ridge um, currently does not have facilities for a fabrication lab that could provide more hands-on work. Um, let's see. Mr. Fackelman said that he plans to add a second teacher to teach one section of the Introduction to Engineering Design course next year. The new teacher is a science teacher with an engineering background, and he noted that this teacher would be able to provide additional feedback about the course at year end. We uh, briefly talked about a couple of items regarding student performance. Um, the first was retakes, and in honors biology, if a student's grade on a retake is lower than their grade on the original test, the student receives the lower, the lower grade on the test. Um, the committee did not discuss other courses. And then the second item was um, park math, coverage of standards in CP and honors courses. Logarithms are taught in honors algebra two but not in CP Algebra 2. Instead, logarithms are taught in CP Pre-Calc. And probability and statistics are taught before the park test in Honors Algebra 2, but after the park test in CP Algebra 2. Ms. Bowman explained that the focus in mathematics curriculum is not on the park exams. It is on preparation for the final mathematics course 
for honors and CP students. Honors students usually take AP Calculus, while CP students typically take either Calculus or Statistics. The next topic was um, a brief update on uh, the CUSAC review that's scheduled in January 2019. And um, the program's component of the review consists of several items pertaining to curriculum. Ms. Stotler, the World Language Supervisor, recently attended a CUSAC meeting and learned that a district receives zero points on one of the world language items if, it doesn't, if, we, if the district does not have a world language program taught by a certified world language teacher. Dr. Heinemann added that 60 points out of 100 in the program's component comes directly from park assessments. So that may have a, um, a larger impact on our CUSAC score in the programs than the world language. And then the final topic that we talked about was um, an instructional approach to social studies called Students Taking Action Together. It's designed to help students get along better with each other, including those with whom they might disagree or whose opinions and ideas they aren't familiar with. Students are taught skills including responsible listening, respectful debate, peer opinion sharing, collaborative creativity, audience-focused communication, and reflective improvement. S this program is designed to be used in social studies instruction, including history, civics, and current events in middle school, and to promote social-emotional learning and character development, as well as academic learning. Ms. Fox is interested in piloting this program at William Anna next year. And in addition, the project citizen teacher at Ridge wants to teach these skills to her students. And um, our next meeting is June 8th. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Ms. Korn? Yeah. Um, I have a question about the, um, the honors chemistry. That I, I'm, I can't understand why it, was, why it was aligned with the SAT subject test. The, only last year, right? Only this year? No. Well, it was, I think there was more of an emphasis on the test this year. This year. And yeah. my question is, what does the SAT subject test, like, do for the kids? Like, what's the, um, what's the benefit of taking the SAT subject Well, it is, it's required for certain colleges as one of your SAT subject test possibilities. Like, if you want to be a chemistry If you want to be a chem major or a science major, for so example. So a chem major who wants to be an engineer probably doesn't have a problem with honors chemistry. Is that, you know? Well, I don't so, know. Something we can assume or not. But, I, you know, as in the future, though, um, it is recommended that students take AP Chemistry in 11th grade. If they, um, they want to take, take this right, test, so, they're right. not gonna align so it it's year. not going to be as much the focus of honors. They're going to change it. They're going to back down. Yeah. I just don't That's like one that. of the plans. Like in the first place, I don't understand why it was happening in the first place. Like, what was the, the impetus to do it in the first place? So, so it's always been aligned with, I, I don't know, I'm getting mixed messages. Either it was always aligned or it wasn't aligned. I don't think it was always aligned because during all the post-secondary reports we used to hear that the, um, the SAT uh, P, uh, the SAT2 subject tests in chemistry were uh, lower scores than the bio and the physics. Right. So and so might. there was a concern expressed, I can't answer by whom, that why are we not doing better on that particular exam? So then they changed. So I get that part. I don't know when it happened, but it's it a, wasn't. I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just, I'm just asking the question because I don't know. I just want to add one other comment, and that is that there's exceedingly few schools now that require the SAT two right. subject. Right. I mean, it just seems. Yeah, they it, they are being used less by yeah. college. Well, it seems like they're dinosaurs. Just from, yeah, you know, from my perspective. And then um, the project lead the way thing down here. Yeah. Um, I know we had all those kids come and talk about it. And are we discussing, do we have a problem with the curriculum, with the curriculum that part we bought from, is that the problem? Or is, um, you know, that just a, it's not hands-on enough? Or, so we have to do this through, do we have a contract with them? Like that we have to use it for the, the actual curriculum, like past a certain time? Or only still, only to the kids who signed up for the STEM program, they're out? So we can stop using their curriculum whenever we want? Oh. Well, there aren't problems with all the courses. This is the one course just the one, this, this that one. seems to have created this um, feedback. So 
And this is the first one in there? Is this the first it's the one first one in the engineering track. Right. And we have not heard similar feedback about. And that's about. the only one they were talking about? When mm -hmm. they it was just the one course. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious because it's. Yeah, and we do have. It comes up um, a lot. And I'm just, yeah, know. we have other courses and we do have two other tracks where the students are okay. are, seem to be okay. Yeah. But this one is a little bit different. Okay. Mr. Byrne? Uh, I, I think the honors chemistry program should be looked at very closely. Because, uh, well, that's exactly what's I, happening I over the summer. <laughs> because it, it looks like that was uh, a problem. And I, I wanted to comment on the students' uh, modeling in engineering. Uh, engineering, really, the first couple of years is all math and physics and, uh, and science. Modeling doesn't come in maybe until senior year. Um, our program is trying to attract the kids because modeling is probably a fun game, but it has nothing to do with engineering. So uh, I think it's right that the modeling is pushed back further and is less important in the program. So again, a design, the whole concept uh, has to be looked at. Mr. Salmon? Um, the teacher recommendation part for, um, that was discussed, are teacher recommendations not, t do they not happen now? So it's just the kids can elect into any course. Well, the, currently there is. Or, or there's a grade threshold. There's a grade requirement. For the currently there's a grade requirement. OK. Right. They can appeal. Yeah, and there's also prerequisite um, courses, courses for some of them. Yeah. Like certain ones, you have to have a certain math already to take a certain science. You know what I mean? There's other prerequisites, plus grades. Anyone else have any questions about the curriculum minutes? Did we vote on the one item yet? No. Yet. We need to, no. We <laughs> Sorry, need to vote it's late. On the book. Okay, we need a roll call on the one item. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Horner? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Corn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McEwen? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Okay, we're up to Advocacy Committee. Um, advocacy met on May 7th, um, and just to go over, uh, to bring in some highlights to you guys, um, there are about four more presentations for the rest of the year that I just wanted to highlight to you guys. So tomorrow you already talked about the smartphone, smart choices um, with the FBI agents with Cybercrime Task Force. That's tomorrow at 7 p.m. at WAMS. Um, on 523, which is Wednesday, um, there's a transition in middle school with Mrs. Hudock at 9 a.m. at Mount Prospect. Um, also that same day, but in the evening at 7 p.m. at Cedar Hill, there is a, I don't know if it's open to the public, that Jen, you would know. Um, there's a parent and teacher book club, The Gift of Failure by Jenica, Jessica Leahy. Um, and on 614 um, at Ridge, with the Ridge um, High School Counseling Department, 8.30 in the morning, they're having a program for seniors and parents and guardians um, called Life After High School with the Ridge um, Counseling Department, which is a new program this year, first time. Um, we talked a little bit about teacher appreciation. Um, one of the things that came out of the SEL um, committee meetings um, was the idea that when teachers are stressed, they sometimes can pass that down to students and um, just like finding ways that the PTOs do such a really good job of um, incorporating teacher appreciation week, weeks into their um, schools. But um, sometimes we could, we could do a little more. So some of the PTOs have implemented little um, ideas of, you know, baking brownies and putting it into teachers' mailboxes or Hershey Kisses or cards and different, different things that are just like um, a sign of appreciation. And the, the feedback from the teachers that have received those um, items has been very positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hopefully um, they're going to talk about it and, and do what works for their school, because obviously every school has a different um, makeup and climate there. Um, we just we just um, talked about the park letter that on. Are you okay? <laughs> on March 26. Um, we sent a letter to Governor Murphy, um, Senator Thomas Kane, Assemblyman John Bramnick, Assemblywoman um, Nancy Munoz, and the NJDOE Acting Commissioner, um, Dr. Lamont Ruffalet, 
about the underfunding school formula and our concerns with park testing. And in, Ms. in April, Mr. McCarrion sent a letter to Governor Murphy about ways to make up snow days, and um, we're sort of waiting for a response on that. Um, in terms of the Municipal Alliance and um, Community in Crisis, Linda um, gave me a report that the Municipal Alliance will be administering, which we've heard about, the student session survey in grades 6, 8, 10, and 12 in early June now. And permission slips have gone out, and Dr. Harlow will tabulate those results. Community in Crisis Hub is in Bernardsville, um, is open, and they have a lot of um, interesting programming going on for the people in the community. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about school security. That probably took up the majority of our meeting. Um, much of it was covered today um, by um, Ms. Devlin. We did talk, we did talk about um, Berners Township being named the 12th safest town in the nation, and congratulations to the police for keeping us very safe in our town. Um, Mr. McCary mentioned that a group of people have been looking at the Stop It app and um, they're, they're, it's been under consideration. The app is supposed to go under a um, rev revise, I guess, update. or update in August. So um, it might be, make more sense to like, look at that in September. They're gonna, they're gonna talk about this some more and let us know what they decide. Um, there was a question or concern that was brought up about you know, with school security, what what about recess before aftercare athletic games on and off property in other areas of town? Obviously, you know, there are a lot of areas to consider. It's not just the buildings, but um, there was a comment about the district website that, and then forgot to check if it was updated, um, that there was some outdated information on the home page running down the um, upcoming events on the right side of the page. There was concern um, about vaping and bringing more awareness and educational opportunities to students about the dangers of vaping now, especially now that more information is starting to come out about <coughs> the, the um, effects of it. Um, some parents have requested to do more uh, to make families aware that there are nicotine testing kits available to buy on their own. Um, <clears throat> and talk about more education for um, at-home testing of, of drugs and nicotine. In terms of athletic coaches, there was a, a concern about some um, inappropriate language that neighbors could hear on Peachtree from their backyard. So we just wanna be um, cognizant that others are around and there's some little kids and, that are our neighbors and we wanna be good neighbors and also be modeled you know, model the behavior that we <clears throat> want our students to um, model or to, to learn from. And then there was also a question about the SOS Express. We, we know that 50% of the Friday folders were being opened and there was just a question about whether Aspen has the mechanism to, it doesn't, uh, darn, <laughs> to know if people are actually reading them. But, and our next, our next um, meeting is June 4th. Does anyone have any question? Yes? Oh, you didn't get it? Oh, you know what? It just came out today. I can get you a copy. Well, if it came out today, then it's probably in your packet. It might be in your packet. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're up to liaison committee reports. This is Walter. Yeah, I just I had a just a quick a quick report. Um, the municipal alliance met on May eighth and. Um, we talked a bit about the Teen Talk program, which had been held on April 11th, and in general, it went very well. And the RAD students led discussions with parents on underage drinking, vaping, social media, and academic stress. But um, the Municipal Alliance would like to um, work with the PTOs next year on this in order to try to get more parents to attend because it wasn't that, it wasn't that well attended, but I mean, the kids did a great job. And then, um, we talked a little bit about the student stressor survey. Um, I just wanted to mention that the survey was last done in 2012, so it's a good time to do it again. And then the Twilight Challenge, which is the Municipal Alliance main annual fundraiser, will be held on Sunday, June 3rd at Pleasant Valley Park. And then uh, the Community and Crisis School Working Group met on May 9th. And this um, group has representatives from the Burns Township, Somerset Hills Regional, and Bedminster School Districts. 
um, Community in Crisis is hosting a presentation on Stop It, which is that app that has been mentioned a couple times, and P3 Campus, which is a similar product, and it's going to be held at their hub in Bernardsville on Tuesday, June 26th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, and uh, all board members are invited to attend if anybody's interested and available, and lunch will be provided. Um, a town hall on underage drinking will be held Wednesday, October 24th at 7 p.m. at the Burns High School Pack in Burnersville. Panelists include uh, Michael Robertson, the Somerset County Prosecutor, and Chief uh, Kevin Valentine of the Burnersville Police Department, and this is free and open to the public. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Mrs. Richmond? What was the other name? It was stop, the Stop It app, and what was the other one? It's called P3 Campus, and it's another um, anim anonymous reporting product that's designed for use in schools. Thank you. Okay, um, we're up to the SEL committee. The SEL committee met on April 30th, and this, the format of this meeting was a roundtable where we had uh, nine staff members in attendance um, representing uh, all subject areas and both the middle school and the high school level. Um, the format was that the uh, staff members were provided uh, questions or topics in question form for roundtable discussion. So the first roundtable discussion topic was, are you giving test retakes? If so, in what format? And do you feel that the school would benefit from a uniform policy on retakes? Um, Mrs. Wildridge referenced the honors biology policy, so I'm gonna kind of go through that quickly. They, they do offer retests, uh, retakes. Um, if you take the retake, your, re your grade must replace the one that you had previously, and there are very specific parameters surrounding your uh, the privilege of taking a uh, retake test, and you must do certain work to demonstrate your investment in um, that effort. In language arts, uh, retakes are must, much less formal than in biology. Teachers provide students the chance to meet where they edit and revise any of their written work. Um, this lends itself to, uh, I'm sorry, ELA lends itself to this approach um, because there is a lot of revision. Uh, one concern teachers expressed is uh, the question of how many opportunities might be too many when it comes to this process. Uh, if you give so many opportunities to improve success, does this potentially position a student so that they have an eligibility for an honors level the following year that might not necessarily appropriate, uh, be appropriate. Uh, several other curricular areas shared this same concern. Uh, in, in language arts, experience has shown that often students who do seek retake opportunities are among those that uh, are already receiving support or accommodations. Uh, the replacement mathematics program at William Annan also offers retake opportunities. Um, so does uh, the ICS program, and that works very similarly to the biology policy where the student has to demonstrate being invested in the opportunity for the retake. At Ridge, some of the math courses are using embedded style of retake opportunities. When a unit test is given, uh, its parts or sections align with the topic students have been quizzed on in preparation uh, during the unit. When they take the test, if they achieve a higher grade on the portion of the test that corresponds to the material that was on the quiz, the higher grade for that section replaces the lower grade they, they received on the quiz. Uh, for, for the first time this year, the math department is offering an end of, end of course exam in honors algebra two and honors pre-calc. Uh, if students earn a higher grade on the exam than the average of their four marking periods, the end of course exam grade will replace their average uh, for the four marking periods. The counseling department was also represented at this meeting and um, they were eager to compliment the teachers on the opportunities for retakes. They feel that um, 
often students are not at their best, uh, either mentally or physically from a health perspective, and that the chance to take a retake is significant in reducing student stress during those circumstances. Overall, the group felt that there was uh, not going to be a benefit to a potential uniform top-down retake policy and that it was best left to the individual departments. The next topic was um, the role that health and PE plays in stress reduction. All of the educators pre present expressed that physical education, health, and wellness programming offers many advantages over option two study hall. Those who oversee study hall noted that many students are not using this time for schoolwork and are often socializing or on their phones. Committee members were reminded of the importance of physical activity and the endorphins that it releases. There was discussion about increasing the amount of health instruction to accommodate greater opportunity to offer wellness and mindfulness programming. Mr. Shallow is looking at opportunities to expand um, the health offerings that we have and that work will be taking place this summer. Any changes would not be included for the 2018-19 school year. <coughs> the next topic was uh, views on weight, weighted grading at Ridge High School. This discussion um, indicated that teachers overwhelmingly support on weighting grades at Ridge High School. Many teachers have observed students at Ridge grade scheming. This is described as a tactic where students prioritize their assignments with the highest value of credit. Uh, for example, an AP science course would be worth seven credits and a math course would be worth five credits, so they would do their uh, work and assignments in descending order of credit to maximize um, in the event that something had to go incomplete. Students are highly focused on taking honors in AP courses to maximize the highest possible GPA, whether or not the course load is in the best interest of the student. Um, some teachers thought that unweighted grading would encourage students to enroll in the appropriate level of course rather than chasing a weighted average. Um, it has even occurred that some students who take a high number of AP courses have come uh, to INRS meetings requesting accommodations because they are feeling very, very overstressed. Anecdotally, some teachers reported <clears throat> that some teachers reported um, experiences where students that graduated came back and all their hard work shared and that all of their dedication and stress and whatnot. The um, their experience in their first year of college was was not all that it was cracked up to be, uh, and all their effort to get into that very competitive college was not without cost. There was some concern about, expressed about the possible issues that could arise from unweighting, such as uh, National Honor Society eligibility impact on ranking in publications like New Jersey Monthly. Um, the committee discussed identifying any districts that might have recently shifted from weeding to unweighting, and um, this will be an ongoing uh, conversation in this committee as well as perhaps in curriculum. There is overall concern by educators that the toll of chasing the carrot of weighted grades will t can take on um, the mental and physical well-being of our students is too much. Desire was expressed to know more about uh, students after they leave Ridge. Um, there's a feeling that there are a good number of Ridge graduates who are not finding a good fit with their initial college selection. Um, Mr. Syatt commented that the counseling department used to send out a postgraduate survey and that the response rate was extremely low, which was unfortunate, so it's a little bit difficult to gather this kind of data. The next topic was the rotating drop schedule at Ridge High School. Um, the staff was interested in more information on uh, the proposed drop schedule. Uh, Mr. Krause was present and he was able to uh, give a little bit of an overview. Uh, teachers appreciated the overview and were generally very supportive of having additional instructional time in the teaching period. They also appreciated the inherent value in fewer transitions during the day. Uh, Mr. Markarian uh, also shared with the committee that our IT director would be working with our new Aspen specialist to run a mock, drop sorry, mock rotating drop schedule using students' course selections for next year.
The next topic was ideas for redu reducing stress for students and teachers. Uh, several teachers um, expressed concerns about, or just general observations about the complexities of using um, email for communications and um, shared their interest in perhaps looking at um, some, some parameters for response time. Uh, and then there was one more, I'm sorry, where's the last page? I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened to it. It's been, too, we've been here too long. Oh, here it is. The last page is uh, just the debrief afterward, and these are just some uh, sort of action points. After um, two hours, all the staff members had to go back to work, and so the committee continued um, by discussing what we had learned. Um, so unanimously, everyone agreed that the students are feeling overstressed, overtaxed, and anxious. This is a pervasive problem that um, is not limited to academic sources. Uh, interest in additional health class time was a recurring theme. There was considerable discussion about how this could potentially impact option two study hall. With Mr. Shell working on possible changes to the health curriculum, the committee will wait to hear what he reports to the curriculum committee when his efforts are complete. Uh, unweighted grading is also well supported by the staff. The committee would like to better understand some of the ramifications of unweighting and will gather some information about other districts who do not weight grades and this will be reported back to the full board. Interest was also expressed in hearing more about the rotating drop schedule and then there were several items that were referred to the curriculum committee for follow-up. That, that included the health and wellness programming and um, some possibilities for um, discussing AP sophomore, AP, I'm sorry, sophomore AP course opportunities. The next meeting will be May 24th, which is in a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and um, that's it. Sorry, it was so long. The 24th? Does anyone have any questions or comments about the minutes? No? Okay. Um, so now we're up to public comment on non-agenda items. If anyone has anything, please make sure you tell us your name and address when you come up. My name is Debbie Murray Breslow. I live at 38 Watchung Drive. I have three items and one request, all related to honors chemistry. First item, let's pick up a bit from the last BOE meeting. The honors chemistry students took a quarterly exam that was allegedly destroyed. The students never saw their exam after they took it. Mr. Byrne, thank you so much for your comments and speaking out at the end of that last meeting. Asking questions is crucial to getting the facts. Here are some facts. The test is, governed, is a government record under a New Jersey law known as OPRA. Just about everything is a government record under this law. Under this law, the students or their parents are entitled to have copies of these records. No exemption exists under New Jersey OPRA to not provide the student's test to the student or the parent. This test is not subject to the AP College Board regulations. Another fact, this test, the one each student took as well as all versions of the test, four versions of this test were given, are educational records or pupil records under other laws. A federal law known as FERPA covers educational records, and the New Jersey law known as the right to know law covers pupil records. So to recap, we have government records under a New Jersey law, OPRA, we have educational records under a federal law, FERPA, and an even more expansive definition of pupil records under the New Jersey right to know Act law. Next fact, under FERPA's regulations, 37 CFR 99E, as well as New Jersey law, the school shall not destroy any educational record or pupil record if there is an outstanding re request to inspect and review the records. I asked to review this record twice on Thursday, April 20, April 19, with my second request asking what steps to follow to appeal the decision denying the parent access to the record. 24 hours later, I was told it was destroyed. This is in violation of federal law and the New Jersey law I just spoke about. The actual test the students took with their names on it and their answers is a pupil record because all that is required under the law is that it relates to a student. It reflected their learning progress. Even the redacted test, the four versions that are still being maintained by the school are pupil records under the law. A very recent 2017 appellate court case 
affirm that pupil records remain a record even if the student's name is removed. It still relates to the student. Precedent in New Jersey is to view the adjective related as used in the definition of pupil record as a sweeping, inclusive concept. Destroying these tests is a violation of law and does nothing to actually help these honors chemistry students. And worse yet, it destroys your credibility. My second item, the harm being done to the honors chem students is detrimental, academically and for their well-being. Make no mistake, these students are very resilient, but it appears that they were intentionally set up to fail. Why? Is it a GPA issue? I see that's coming up on the agenda. These kids put in hours and hours and still fail the test. The tremendous effort and worry caused by chem is also impacting all other subjects that the students are taking. They're stressed. Additional chem practice materials were only made available on May 9th. I've been asking for them since March 4th. No summer assignment. Some teachers allowed test corrections and retakes as early as marking period one and marking period two, and then were told to stop. There's plenty of room in honors chem. My daughter's class has the smallest number of students. There are three teachers on staff across nine periods. Why is the chem department saying Rich has too many honors chemistry students in 10th grade? Honors chem is not historically an SAT chem test. Never was. If it changed this year, these students didn't know, and the only right thing to do is to allow test corrections to help these students pass the test. Curving and grade manipulations will not help the marking period four test. It's already failing, and including the final that's gonna be given. There's no reason why these students shouldn't aim high and strive to do well and feel good about their work. It's been the opposite for these 10th graders. The school profile for the class of 2018 had a whopping 3% increase for those students averaging between 4.5 and 5.0 on their GPAs. 7% of the class of 2018 got the highest GPA, and that's only based on six semesters. That's the end of your junior year. That brings me to my third point. Board President Robin McKeon was gracious enough to reach out to me last week about some of my concerns. She revealed some troubling inconsistencies. She said that Honors Chem was not aligned with the subject matter SAT test. In fact, she said the district was moving away from subject tests because so many colleges don't want or need them. Excuse me, ma'am, you have about a minute to go. She's a 10-year veteran on the board and sits on the curriculum committee. How is it that the board has completely different information than what our Honor Chem students have been told by the chemistry department? Our students are not experiments. They are certainly not data. She mentioned the weighting of GPAs. Is that what this is about? Too high overall? Almost 90% of the rich graduates class of 2018 have a B or better GPA. Do colleges view this as an indication of an easy high school? Is that impacting the students with solid Bs getting into the better colleges? Is the higher GPA aided by the honors weighting the reason why next year ninth graders have been scared away from honors chem? I checked the Milburn High School website. Every student that qualifies for an AP course can take it, but no more than eight APs total overall and no more than three APs in the junior year will be factored into their weighted GPA. That's certainly a much better approach than making the class of 2020 suffer the data manipulations and curving exercises that epically fails to help them emotionally when more high stakes tests are coming. The curving only identifies the top six or so students in 10th grade chemistry who may have had more exposure to the more rigorous tests by virtue of chemistry lead practice problems that the honor teachers do give out from prior years upon a student request. All our students should have had access to these resources and so much sooner than the middle of marking period four. My final request, allow test corrections from marking period four immediately for all the students. It will exponentially help the stress and the well-being of the students. It takes a village. You still have time to help 120 10th grade students. Thank you. anyone else for public comment? Jim Vogel, Evergreen Place. It's a little weird coming up here for a third time, but I'll take it. Uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Syed for uh, Superintendent of the Year. I don't think anybody from the public uh, acknowledged that. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Mar <laughs> Mr. Marcaren. I'm looking at you, but he's writing, uh, he's writing uh, Mr. Marcaren. <laughs> Um, I'd like to also welcome uh, Ms. Smith. Uh, you have your work cut out for you, so um, welcome. Um, you guys have a very difficult job as a Board of Education, and um, I don't envy it. Yes, I want it to become a part of it, 
um, a while ago uh, in applying for one of the vacancies. Um, and I see that you all have to, to deal with. And I don't think that the public really understands what it takes to be on a Board of Education, what it takes for uh, the decisions that you make, what goes into the decisions that you make. Um, and I'll admit, I've been hard on you at times, um, but I've also applauded your efforts at times. And I think it's important to applaud your efforts in this case for the sole reason that this is one of those hot topics that nobody's going to be happy with whatever you decide to do. So the only thing that I can add to the conversation um, that I haven't already added, um, aside from the thing in my handouts that I've given you over the last two board meetings, um, is do what you think is best for our students. Um, you know my position, you know how I feel, you know how other people in the community feel and, and their position, um, but at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to what you think you have to do as a Board of Ed to keep our students safe and mentally well. And I know that it's gonna be a very difficult balancing act um, I know there are no easy fixes, there are no quick fixes, and I think the public needs to understand that this is going to take time, um, whether it be hiring counselors, getting wellness curriculum, all the security upgrades that were uh, recommended uh, by DevTech, um, and then anything else that you may or may not decide to do in the future. So um, I just would like publicly to applaud you, and, and hopefully that this gets in one of the uh, news outlets, because I don't think you are given enough credit for what you do um, for the kids of our community um, and the schools at large. So thank you very much. Is there anyone else for public comment? No? Okay. I'm gonna close public comment at this point. We have a motion for a brief executive session, please, for pupil issues. Mrs. White, Mrs. Swarner, thank you. Do we have to do a roll call to do that? Okay, a voice call, is everyone okay? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? To go into executive session for a minute. Okay, to go back and skip this, the board thing. No, we'll come back, we're coming back here. Yeah, we have to come back, we're just, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. Hopefully. An estimate? Ten minutes? Okay. Pupil issues. This, I, I guess we could table the board forum items till next time since it's so late and that way no one's waiting for us to talk about them. Does that make sense? I, I think so and I also think that given the nature of them, we need someone sitting in the audience yes. right, to engage the community right. in the discussion. Okay. I mean, that's just yeah, no, no, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to table those two items. We're going to go in executive session. Okay, a motion to table those two items, Mrs. White and Mrs. Waldridge, till next meeting. All in favor? Aye. Procedural question. Do we need to come back here to adjourn the meeting? Yeah. Or can we adjourn yeah. from... We uh, well, yeah. you, can, you, know, I, you can adjourn it. Uh, I think you can adjourn it from the other location, but I think we should advise the public that they don't intend to come back. That they, that there will be, it's not intended that there will be any formal board action in public after the executive session. We're going to come back. Okay, in 
same question. It's what he talks about. Could you tell us about your company work? How long were you in Alexandria, Virginia? I was in Virginia for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, just getting How many were out of the high school? Well, no, just for the media stuff, and then I'll, i got to get back. Well, I know. Yes. And how big is the district is that? The district is 18,000 total. The high school alone is currently 38,000. Cotton? 18,000? Oh, cotton, yes. We have a 7 o'clock meeting in the morning. <laughs> I'm canceling that meeting. We did have a 7 o'clock meeting. Remember the titles? Yeah. T.C. what? Williams. T.C. Williams. Mm -hmm. Williams. 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 <laughs> okay. I always forget. It's, a it's a remember the titles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. T.C. or initials? No. That's just it. Yes. <laughs> and what are your roots in New Jersey? Um, I was born and raised in New Jersey. And where? The Flemington area. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. The Brereton Valley? Yes, sir. And how was it? You were there through your high school? Mm -hmm. Hunter Central? I don't know. I don't know. That's I'm just looking at you. Yeah, no, no. We always joke about that. He says, that. get ready. I said, I don't want that job. Fixed. That's your job. I like what I do. I like what I do. Family. Oh, that's a good, good question. Um, the job was a great opportunity that brought me closer to Just because he's standing there. <laughs> this is my, this is my <laughs> free speech. Just making sure that <laughs> I don't want to feel uncomfortable with any questions. Oh, and let's see. It was a B, bachelor's in James Madison. And that was in what? Psychology. BS. Oh, yeah. Is there a master's or a program? Yes, sir. Master's in counseling. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Wake Forest. Sitting next to you, do you know her? Um, yeah, that was uh, Amy Malik. Say again? Amy Malik. M A L L. Uh, actually, I have to spell it. Maybe the name. M E L I C K. Yeah, there was a lot. Um, you can make a school a prison. You can add as many extra layers of protection and reinforcement. Reinforcement. 
enforcement as you have money to spend. But vulnerabilities will always remain. They'll always remain. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Democracy is great, but after about 20 people, it's not really the boss. I understand. And think that each person is the last one, and then someone gets up and comes down. Well, I think, too, you know, people, they they don't intend to speak, and then yeah. they hear somebody, and then something pops in their head, yeah. and they start jotting down because they know that, like, three or four people are going to speak, and then they yeah. come up, and then they, they talk. A couple people.
What's that? Does the wait for them to come back? Do I have to wait? I have to wait for all of you to leave. <laughs> and then for them to come back and leave. So now, at this point, we need a motion for adjournment. Mrs. Swerner and Mrs. Waldridge, um, do we need a roll call? Or just a voice roll call? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.